Welcome to the six steps to create an e-commerce e marketing funnel that sells 24 seven. Uh, I wanna go over a few things today before we get started. Uh, number one, this class is best for people who are not already using complex email automation. So if you consider yourself an email automation pro and you have really complex email automation set up, this might be a little bit more um, of an intermediate slash beginner level class. So you might be too advanced for this and I don't wanna waste your time so I'll let you know up front. Uh, you might still find value from it, and there will be Q&A at the end, so you can feel free to ask uh, questions then. Also, this is a one-hour class. I will stay later than one hour uh, to answer questions if we have them, but I usually try to keep the content under one hour and then have some questions before the hour ends. I will email you a replay, uh, and this is being recorded, uh, so I will email you a replay of it. Uh, if you by chance don't get that uh, replay, you can email me at lizw at aweber.com and I'll send the replay over to you, but I'll get it over to you within 24 hours of this class. Uh, and there will be a survey at the end. And uh, if you could take that survey and let me know what you think of this class, uh, what you loved, what other topics you would like to hear about, what we could do better, uh, please let me know. I do read all of those comments and they mean a lot to me and they help us provide more classes like this and make those classes even better. Also throughout class, keep thinking about what questions do you have? Uh, there will be Q&A at the end and uh, I'm sure you'll have questions. So feel free to enter those in the chat. And I do have a class resources page that includes links uh, for the class that you can use um, throughout. So let me open that up so you guys can all access the class resources. Uh, so you should be able to see a button with class resources now, uh, but I will also paste that into, into chat. And if you're viewing the recording of this uh, replay, uh, then you'll find the resources section uh, below the video. Uh, so use that resources page. It's going to share all the links that I mentioned during this class and uh, give you everything you need. Good. So I see that people are opening resources. Great. Uh, yes, Greg, this is a sales funnel webinar. Um, Hopefully it'll cover what you're looking for. Uh, so that's what uh, to keep in mind. And if you have any technical issues during this class, uh, keep in mind a few troubleshooting things you can try. Uh, typically it's due to your own internet, your own internet connection or the device or the browser you're viewing this class from. Google Chrome is the best browser. If you're having trouble hearing or seeing, uh, you can try exiting out and coming back in. Try using a full screen mode on your, on your computer as well, those things can help. So on average for one, for every $1 spent on email, on email marketing, business or er, businesses earn $38. So that's the return on investment of email. The stat is from the DMA. So reason many of us are here today is probably because we know that email marketing is extremely, extremely effective and by investing in email marketing, you can exponentially pay off your investment and grow your business and earn a lot of revenue. And email marketing is especially great for selling online products and e-commerce. So this is the perfect place to be. Uh, now, before we get started, I would love to know, are you currently using email marketing to promote your online products or services? I'm going to launch that into the poll section. And I would love to know because this is going to give me a sense of where the audience is at, whether you're just getting started or whether you, you know, you've, you've uh, already been doing this. And as you answer that poll, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Liz Willits. I'm the Senior Content Marketing Specialist at Aweber. And I like to describe myself as an email marketing nerd. I live and breathe this stuff. I've worked with thousands of businesses to help them optimize their email marketing funnels uh, to grow their business with email marketing and just to consult on how they can better use email marketing for their business. I'm a keynote speaker uh, and uh, I've sent millions of emails throughout the course of my career and found out through all of that sending what makes for a really successful email and what kind of emails actually perform. Uh, so I'm really happy to be with you all today. I love classes like this. It's one of my favorite things to do. 
Uh, and I love getting to communicate with you all, even while we are, many of us, uh, quarantined or stuck at home or even going into the office still. So it's great to have you all here. And let's take a quick look at the poll results. Uh, it looks like we're nearly 50-50 on, uh, on whether or not people are using email marketing to promote their online products or services right now, uh, which is awesome. Um, we're going to have content today that's going to help you get started and also help you optimize what you're already doing. So thanks for answering that poll. I'll close it off. Now, today I'm sharing a six-step process that you can use to sell your products with email automation and automation in general online. Uh, so the first thing, though, to make any of this work is you need to have an email list. Uh, and you need to have an email list uh, that's sizable enough where you can sell your products and services because not everyone on your email list is going to buy. So you need to take that in mind as you're growing your list. And so the first step is to, if you're not already growing your list, start growing your email list. And if you are already growing your list, to find ways to grow it even faster. Uh, now, you can be really successful with a small email list. You don't need thousands and thousands of subscribers, but it always helps to have more subscribers. And uh, you can actually automate much of your list growth. So you put something in place and it will grow your list for you. And there are two ways to do that. Uh, one, there are two tools that can help you do that. One is a sign-up form and the other is a landing page. Now, if you're selling online products, uh, you would use a sign-up form on your website, most likely. And it might be like a sign-up form like this. This is from uh, Magnolia Market. And this is a sign-up form that appears. It's exit intent. So when you go to exit the page, the sign-up form appears. And you can see it offers a 15% off your next purchase, which is great if you sell online products. Because let's say you have an e-commerce store like Magnolia Market. Um, a, a traditional lead magnet that online marketers might use, for instance, a guide to doing X, Y, and Z might not work for you uh, because you might not be educating people on certain things. Instead, you're selling products. So this is an example of a sign-up form you could use to start growing your list. People on your site are interested in your products. And so offering them a discount is the perfect lead magnet for them. Uh, and it's also going to get them, uh, encourage them to buy. Uh, and so when what you should use a sign up form when you're trying to convert your website traffic into email subscribers. So I recommend having a sign up form on your website in multiple places. Uh, in the case of Magnolia Market, they use an exit intent form on pretty much every single product page and pretty much every page of their site. And you should probably do that with a sign up form. You want it to be uh, all over your site because you want to make it easy for people to subscribe and you don't want people to go to your site and not find a place to subscribe and not see the opportunity to subscribe. Because when someone visits your website, they may totally forget about you after that visit and they may never come back. But if you get their email address, then you can contact them again and get them to come back to your site and convince them to buy. So I recommend having a sign-up form on your site, make it prominent. I see a lot of people who bury their sign-up form. It's difficult to find. So make it prominent. You can use an exit intent form. You can use um, a form that pop up pops up on a time delay. So after someone's been on a page for 15 seconds, uh, and you can also have an embedded form. And Aweber offers sign-up forms if you're an Aweber customer, uh, so you can easily create sign-up forms. And the other tool you should have is a landing page. Uh, here's an example of a landing page I built uh, with the Aweber landing page builder. And the example business that I'm using here is a business that sells honey online with their e-commerce store. And so this landing page is off. This landing page offers 20% off your first order when you subscribe. Now, why? What's the difference between a landing page and a sign-up form, and when should you use each? Well, I just said that you should use a sign-up form on your website. Uh, and, but a landing page is actually better when you're trying to get people to subscribe who are not on your website. Uh, so for instance, you can promote your landing page on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. And I would actually, I actually think it's a much better idea to promote your landing page uh, and not, not your website. Because if you're trying to get people to subscribe, that's what a landing page is for. A landing page is entirely focused on getting people to take one action. 
And in the case of a landing page, it's trying to convince people to subscribe to your newsletter. That's the one action it's trying to get them to take. And it's a much better experience to take people uh, who are interested in subscribing to your email list uh, to a landing page and is to a sign up form. If someone's already on your website, I recommend using a sign up form. But if you are, uh, let's say, um, promoting your newsletter on Facebook, I would use a landing page and link off to that. Uh, if you are using, if you have paid ads where you are paying for ads to drive people, to try to get people to subscribe to your to your email list and to give away your lead magnet, maybe, then I would also use a landing page and not take people to your website where a form pops up because your landing page is going to focus people on the single action you want them to take. Now, I always recommend using a lead magnet of some kind on your signup form and on your landing page. And you can use the same lead magnet on your signup form and your landing page. Uh, so, you know, you can use that twice, which is nice. And a lead magnet is a freebie or incentive you give people in exchange for subscribing. So I want to run through a few lead magnet ideas. Uh, you could do a product discount like I showed you, a product or service discount, like 10% off their next purchase, their first purchase, 15% off, whatever you deem to be appropriate. You could also have a membership or loyalty club. Um, so one of my favorite companies is DSW. I buy a lot of shoes from DSW. And I'm also in their membership and their loyalty club. And I gave them my email address so that I could be in that membership and loyalty club. And what you can do is, is for people in your membership and your loyalty club, you can give them special offers, uh, insider information, things like that. You could also offer um, a free product with their first order. I've seen a lot of e-commerce companies do this. You could offer free shipping on their first order as your lead magnet. And you could also have a contest or a giveaway where let's say you have a business where you sell um, stickers, uh, then you could give away a packet of stickers uh, to people who sign up for your contest. One lucky winner will get that prize. Uh, so those are a few different examples of ways you could grow your list and lead magnets are going to give people the reason why they should give up their email address and the reason why they sub should subscribe. Uh, so that's step one. Uh, make sure you have sign up forms and landing pages created so that you're growing your list. And when someone fills out the sign up form on the landing page, they'll be automatically added into your Aweber account or into your email marketing account uh, so that you can start promoting to them. And I have a bonus tip to go along with this one, which is bonus tip use your thank you page to sell. So after someone gives you their email address, after they subscribe via your sign up form or your landing page, you should have a thank you page that you create uh, that people see after they, sh they sign up. And most people don't use this page very well. Um, they kind of, you know, call it in. It's just a thank you page. It's not important. But uh, research actually shows that people, that your audience is uh, very likely to buy right after they join your email list. So you can actually optimize and use this moment to sell. So on your thank you page, after someone subscribes, you can promote your product. Um, and if you don't do this, you might be leaving money on the table because as research shows, people are more likely or, or likely to buy at, during, this, uh, during this transaction. So here's an example of a thank you page that, that, sh uh, that sh uh, sells a product. It says, thank you for entering to win a free box. So in this case, it was a lead magnet. Uh, their lead magnet they were promoting is a contest. And you can get, you see right here that they offer uh, your first box for 50% off with a code snack now. Uh, and then they have a link to purchase with that promo code. So they're selling right on the thank you page after someone subscribes to their email address, uh, to their email list. And so a lot of people don't uh, take advantage of this opportunity, but this is something you can try. You can build a thank you page that promotes a product or a service. And you can actually use the Aweber landing page builder to do this as well, or whatever landing page builder you have. So that's step one. You have your sign up form, you have your landing page. If you have questions about that, just drop that in the chat. And the bonus tip with this step is use your thank you page as an opportunity to sell. Step two, you want to make sure. So now we've just set up the automated system to collect subscribers for us. We've built our landing page. We've built our sign up form. Uh, we have our sign up form on our website, 
on so any website traffic coming to our to our site will convert into email subscribers and we have our landing page on social platforms maybe we're promoting our landing page with paid ad traffic uh, so now we have a system in place to start growing our list but as soon as someone joins your list you want to have an automated email they receive called the welcome email and you might have heard of the welcome email before it's a really important email it's the first email people receive and it welcomes them to your list so why do i say welcome emails are important well on average welcome emails get four times higher open rates and five times higher click-through rates than other emails uh, so this is a moment where your audience is really engaged uh, and it's a great time to take advantage of that engagement engagement and maybe get people to even buy and uh, if you don't have a welcome email it can actually hurt your open rates and your click-through rates in the long term um, because uh, this, this welcome email basically gets people introduced to who you are, gets them used to opening emails from you, uh, gets them used to seeing what your emails look like. And it can also, the purpose of the welcome email is to get people excited about future emails so that they're more likely to open and click on those emails. So if you don't have this email, not only are you missing out on this high moment of engagement with your new subscribers, but you could also be hurting your open rates and your click-through rates in the future. So you want to make sure you have this welcome email. And here's what you can include in a welcome email. Uh, number one, deliver your incentive or your lead magnet. So if you promise uh, a discount on your, on your signup form, a, a product discount on your signup form or your landing page, you can share that in this email. Uh, two, set expectations, tell people what kind of content they're going to receive by being a subscriber and uh, perhaps how often they're going to receive emails from you if you know how often you send emails. And three, like I mentioned, this is a great opportunity to build excitement. I see welcome emails with 90% open rates because people are so excited the moment they subscribe to your email list. And if you don't send a welcome email, they might forget who you are and you're kind of missing out on that moment of excitement. Uh, but while your subscribers are excited about subscribing to your email list, build excitement for future emails. Tell them about all the great stuff you're going to send them. Uh, and if you have like a loyalty club or a membership that you offer, talk about all the premium content they're going to get from you. So here is an example of a welcome email from Ann Taylor, which is a clothing store. And uh, they say it all starts here. Good things are coming your way, like special offers style inspo and more and then they include the 25 dollars off your full price purchase of 75 dollars or more which is um what they promote on their sign up form as their lead magnet and you can see this email isn't super long but it explains and it, set, it sets expectations gets people excited by saying hey you're gonna get special offers style inspiration and more in these emails but it also delivers the lead magnet I'm just taking a quick look at chat here. Just making sure we have, uh, cool, everything's good. Um, yeah, so you wanna make sure that you're selling, sending that welcome email, it's really important. And even here, um, Ann Taylor, here in this welcome email, they're using this as an opportunity to sell. So yes, they are delivering their lead magnet, but their lead magnet is a coupon. Uh, so inevitably, this is going to get people to purchase uh, because that's what coupons do. So we, that's what you can do when you're an e-commerce store. You can start actually selling uh, very gently in this welcome email. I wouldn't recommend having a hard sell in a welcome email because remember, your subscribers just joined your list. Uh, so they don't really know you that well. This isn't the time for a hard sell. But automate your welcome email. Send it out to subscribers as soon as they join your list. Okay, so step three, we're gonna move on to step three. Step one, you wanna make sure you're growing your list. Step two, you wanna make sure you have that automated welcome email up. And then once you're welcome people to your list, it start, it's time to start nurturing those subscribers so that they're ready to buy. And you can use a combination of email automation for this as well as uh, some one-time emails or broadcast emails. So step three, convince your subscribers to buy and you wanna nurture them so that they do. Now, before I jump into some email specific ways to do this, I'm going to talk about a couple ways that you will be more likely to sell in the emails you create in your funnel. Um, so one thing that I recommend to everyone is to try the PAS formula and PAS stands for problem, 
agitation solution. And it's a great way to write emails that are convincing and that are gonna get people more likely to buy. So what you do is you introduce a problem or a pain point that your subscriber has uh, that your product or your service is gonna solve for them. Uh, so let's say, um, you know, a product I bought recently, and I'm actually going to talk about some of their email marketing strategy during this presentation, but a product that I bought recently was Simply Safe. And so the problem that someone might have when they buy a security system like Simply Safe is they're worried about home security, they're worried about safety. Um, and maybe another problem is that the, the others, the other home security systems out there are really expensive. So these might be the problems or the pain points that audience has. So in your email, you introduce that problem. Then you agitate it, so you explain why this problem is such a big deal for your subscribers, and you kind of make them really feel that pain. And then you introduce your product or your service as a solution. So if you're struggling to figure out how to write a sales email, try using the PAS formula. It makes it, uh, it gives you a structure to write within, uh, so you're not just having to write from a blank page and often writing feels uncomfortable for people and i'm a professional writer but i use pas all the time uh, because it just simplifies uh, the writing and the conversion process because you don't have to start from scratch you have this nice structure to work within uh, and this formula is going to make it much easier to draft emails that actually convert subscribers into buying into buyers and you don't have to be a strong writer uh, to use this formula and I actually, in the class resources, which I shared with you earlier, I included a link to a blog post that shares info about PAS and an example of PAS in action. And it also shares other copywriting, uh, copywriting formulas that you can use in email. Uh, so check out the resources section to see uh, all of those copywriting formulas. And I'm just going to drop that link to the resources page. I'm going to drop that into chat again, just in case you didn't get access to that. So uh, another thing you can do to sell when you're doing, when you're sending these uh, conversion focused emails is to talk about pain points. I just mentioned PAS, which talks about problems uh, and pain points. And here's this email from Simply Safe that I mentioned. And they say right here in the second paragraph, over a decade ago, we created Simply Safe to transform an industry that has taken advantage of consumers for too long, an industry that was known for locking you in long term contracts, fine print, and aggressive sales tactics. And so you can see here, they're introducing Simply Safe, but they're introducing it in the context of their audience's pain points and problems. Uh, so they're not saying, hey, Simply Safe is amazing, it's the best product out there, um, it has this feature, it has this feature, and has this feature. Instead, they're saying, Hey, you have these pain points, uh, and Simply Safe is going to alleviate those pain points for you. Uh, and then they also have some social proof right here. Uh, so social proof is uh, testimonials, case studies, or a number of users. So in this case, they say Simply Safe protects over three million people. So social proof simply proves that this product has worked for other people, and so psychologically, the buyer feels that it will work for them too. Another thing that you can use to sell in these conversion focused emails is testimonials. So uh, testimonials have been seen to increase conversions by 34%. It's just two to three sentences that you can add to your email. And it's like a, a positive quote from one of your users that says how great your product is. So these are just a few sales tips that you can use in your emails to increase conversion rates. Use PAS. Um, make sure to mention your audience's pain points and use testimonials because they can increase conversion rates by 34%. Uh, and a quick sale discount email example, this was one from Freshly, uh, which is a meal delivery service. And you can see that they're just offering six dinners for $4.99 for two weeks. So it's a discount on their product and service. Uh, and so you can have this as an automated email. Once someone joins your list, you could have an automated offer that they can receive. So you send out your welcome email and your automation campaign, and then you have a wait time of maybe a week in your automation campaign. And then you have this automated email that goes to them. Uh, and so new subscribers can have this sale or this discount that they can uh, use for a limited amount of time, and it's going to encourage them to buy. And again, this is automated, so you can set it up once, have it go out to your subscribers after a certain number of days and start to get sales from it. 
Another thing you can do to help convert subscribers in your email automation is to send emails related to site visits. And this can be one of the single most effective uh, ways to, uh, to send emails that are really relevant to your audience and that are more likely to convert. Uh, and so you use to do this, use a, use a technique called page hit automations. And the way page hit automations works is someone visits a page of your website. And on, when they visit that page, you tag them. Uh, so you apply a tag to that subscriber and you can, that tag is inside your email marketing platform. So for instance, Aweber, and then you can use that tag to add people to automated email campaigns. And so then you send them an e a series of emails, email one or email two, uh, that's related to the page they visit. Uh, so for instance, let's say you have an online store and uh, you sell and deliver a bunch of different desserts. Uh, and I'm using the dessert example because I love, I love sweets uh, and I couldn't help myself. And so you have a subscriber who visits your product page uh, that's filled with different types of cakes. So you have all these online desserts you're selling. You have a product page that shows off all the different cakes that you sell. Uh, and so then when they visit that page, you tag them in your email marketing platform, interested in cake. Uh, and if you're wondering what a tag is, a tag is simply a label that you apply to your subscribers that helps to identify uh, their interests, their actions, and that you can also use to send segmented automation emails to your subscribers. So they visit your cakes page, you tag them interested in cake, and then they get added to an automated email series based off that tag. Uh, and it promotes the automated email series promotes the different kind of cakes that you offer. Uh, and so this person may not have converted, except that you're taking what pages they visit on your website and you know that they're interested in that content because they're visiting on your website and you're tagging them in your email marketing platform and then sending them emails that relate to the interests that they've expressed. And so this is a great way to get more people to convert because instead of sending emails, which may be irrelevant to them, uh, so you have a dessert website and maybe you have, you sell cookies but your audience is not interested in cookies. Uh, the certain subscribers, they just like cake. Uh, so with page hit automations, you can tell what content your subscribers are interested in by what website content they visit. And then you can promote relevant products to them with email automation. So that's step three. You wanna make sure that you have in your automation series, uh, different emails, that are convinced people to buy. Uh, so you might have a sale or a discount email. You might also have a series of emails that you send out just based off of people's interests and their actions on your website. But once you get through step three, people, some people, they may add things to their cart. Uh, so they may say, uh, let's go back to the dessert website example. They may add a cake to their, to their cart, their online cart, and they're interested in buying this cake but then they never finish their purchase and they just completely forget to finish their purchase and never buy. And this is such a missed opportunity and it's a really deadly email marketing mistake that a lot of e-commerce businesses make. And it really decreases sales because you have this subscriber who is ready to buy. They've added a product to their cart um, and maybe they just forget, you know, life is just, there's so much, so many distractions online and life is busy. So maybe they just forgot about their purchase. Maybe they need a final push to make that purchase. So step four is to remind them to complete their purchase. You're going to have people who buy right away and you don't need to remind them. And then there are going to be certain people who add things to their cart, but don't actually end up purchasing. And so if you can remind them that can increase your sales quite a bit because instead of trying to convince someone who's not ready to buy, to buy, you have someone who's, you know, is ready to buy and you're just getting them to make that final step. And so the way you can do this is to use cart abandonment emails. And a cart abandonment email is an email you send to people when they add a product to their cart on your website and they don't actually finish their purchase. And so you can send an email like Freshly does here and they say your meals are one click away what you left in your cart would look really good in your fridge, complete your order. So this is just a simply, this is just simply an email, an automated email they send out to people who don't complete their order. They add a product to their cart, but they don't actually complete that order. Uh, and there are a couple ways that you can send cart abandonment emails. 
One way is to use an integration with your e-commerce e platform. Uh, so I'll, I'll get into that into a moment. Uh, so if you use an e-commerce platform, you can use an integration between your email marketing platform and your e-commerce platform to send an abandoned cart email. You could also use page hit automations, which I introduced earlier, which is when you tag people based off the pages on your website that they visit. And so I'm going to jump into both of these. Uh, number one, though, is using an integration. Uh, so for instance, your e-commerce site might be WooCommerce or it might be Shopify. And these are two great e-commerce platforms that are going to help you uh, build a site where you can sell products online and have cart pages and track your orders and everything like that. And uh, you can actually use AWeber and these integrations to send abandoned cart emails. Uh, and I'm going to drop, if you check out the resources page for this class, you'll see articles on how to integrate AWeber and WooCommerce and how to integrate AWeber and Shopify. But yeah, you can send abandoned cart emails with these integrations between AWeber and WooCommerce and Shopify. And that's a really easy way to send abandoned cart emails. So if you use either WooCommerce or Shopify, I recommend using our AWeber integration to send your abandoned cart emails. Uh, and I'll drop these links into chat. Uh, Katie has a good question. What do you use PayPal? And I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but yes, uh, hold on, hold your thought on the, uh, the uh, PayPal question, Katie. I'll get back to that. Uh, so the other way that you can send abandoned cart emails is with page automations. Uh, so you can use page automations to send abandoned cart emails. Uh, and Aweber has page it automations. This is pretty cool. What you would do is step one, tag customers when they visit your receipt page. So when someone visits a page, a receipt page that sh shows that they've purchased a product, you would want to tag that person as a customer. Um, and so you can tag them based off the different receipt pages they visit. So let's say they, you like going back to the online dessert example, let's say they bought a cake off your site. They visit a receipt page for that cake that says your purchase was successful. And so when they visit that page, you ta tag them um, cake, cake customer. So that's step one. You want to make sure that you are tagging customers once they complete a purchase. And I'll explain how that's relevant in a moment. And then step two, you want to tag people who visit a cart page. Uh, so if someone visits a page on your site uh, that is their cart, you want to tag them based off that visit. And then you want to, step three, add them to an automated campaign that will send an email if they don't complete their purchase. So let me show you how this works inside AWeber. Uh, so you should see the AWeber UI right now. Uh, so first off, step one is you want to set up page hit automations. So to do that, you go over to list options. If you use a different email marketing platform, it might be somewhat similar in your own email platform. Uh, but you want to go over to list options, go down to list automation. So right here, list options, list automation. So when you open this up, you'll see subscriber automations. We're going to skip over that. And we're going to go to page hit automations. Uh, so you can add an automation from scratch and just by clicking on add automation. And then you can see this little window where you're going to say if the web page URL contains or exactly matches this URL, I'll add these tags to subscribers or I will remove tags from subscribers. So you can both add and remove tags. But I'll show you that I already have two of these page hit automations set up. So I have one that tags my customers. Let me show you that. So if one of my subscribers visits a web page URL that contains the word receipt, I then tag them as a customer. So that way I know that the subscriber successfully completed their purchase. They visited the receipt page. They're tagged as a customer in my platform. And so this is going to allow me to send special emails, special automated emails to just my customers, because based off this customer tag, I can launch automated email series for my customers, which is great. So not only is this going to help me identify who my customers are as soon as they become customers, but it's also going to help me with my abandoned cart email, which I'll show you in a moment. So that's the one thing you're going to want to have for abandoned cart emails. Make sure you're tagging people when they become customers. And the other thing you want to do is tag people when they visit a cart page. So I then also have this automation set up. Uh, if the web, web page URL contains cart, 
tag the subscriber cart abandonment. Now, your own URLs are going to be different. Uh, your URLs might, your links might contain a different word in them. Um, so it might not, they might not contain the word cart. Uh, it might be a different word. Uh, so you want to make sure you're creating this based off of what your URLs look like. Um, so, you know, it won't necessarily be cart. But now I'm tagging people who visit my cart page and I'm tagging customers as soon as they purchase. So that's my two page hit automations I have set up. Now, let me show you my automated cart abandonment email campaign. If I go to messages and down to campaigns, campaigns is Aweber's email automation platform. Again, if you're using another email marketing platform, this process should be somewhat similar. But you go down to campaigns, open up your campaigns. And I already have a campaign created for cart abandonment. And I'm going to show you this campaign so you can get a sense for how this works. So if I open up this campaign, you can see that the campaign triggers when these tags are applied, cart abandonment. And remember, someone gets the cart abandonment tag if they visit a cart page on your site. And so what this does is it then says, sends, sends an email that says, don't forget to finish your order. Now you might say though, well, wait a minute though, everyone who visits my cart page is gonna get this tag cart abandonment and receive this email. But what if they, they end up purchasing? Well, what this is going to do, if you look over here on the right, there are subscriber automations. So remove subscribers from this campaign using tags. So when the tag customer is applied, the subscriber gets removed from the campaign. So as soon as someone gets becomes a customer, uh, so they visit your cart site, they get that cart abandonment, they get that cart abandonment tag, they're added to this campaign. But as soon as they finish their purchase and they get that customer tag, they'll be moved out of this campaign. So that's why I actually have a two hour wait time here in the email, because I want to give people an opportunity to purchase before I send this cart abandonment email. And you can set this time to whatever you want it to be. It could be one day, it could be 48 hours however long you determine is enough time that your subscriber has ad, has visited the cart page, added something to their cart, but they haven't become a customer yet because they don't have that customer tag. Uh, so that's how you can build a cart abandonment campaign in Aweber. And you can actually send multiple emails. So I could add a wait time in here, drag it in from the left. I could wait one day and then I can drag in another email and actually have two emails I send. So let me quickly show you how to build this from scratch. I'll cancel out of here. You would just go to this green create a campaign button, click create a campaign. We have all kinds of campaigns that are pre-built that you can choose from, but I'm going to choose a blank campaign. I'm going to name this campaign uh, cart abandonment cakes because we're going to use our online desserts e-commerce site example. Uh, so this is a cart abandonment series for people who abandon you know, uh, their cake purchase. So I want to, uh, so the, here I'm selecting a trigger to begin the campaign. So I want us to do it off a tag. So this is starting a campaign when a tag is applied to your subscribers. So I'll choose tag applied. I'll then select my tag and I want to do um, abandoned cart. So this campaign will trigger for anyone who has the abandoned cart tag. Uh, and then I want to add in my message. I'll add in whatever message I want right there. You can either choose a message from drafts or create a message. And I'll drag in my wait time. And I want to, in my case, I want to set it to two hours. So I'm going to do that. And then I want to make sure that if someone becomes a customer, they're removed from this campaign. So over here on the right hand side, I can click this blue button to add automations. And I want to remove the subscriber from the campaign if they have this customer tag. Hit apply, and then I would hit save and exit, and that's it. That's how you create an abandoned cart campaign inside a Weber. Uh, and when you're using page hit automations, it does require an additional set, uh, step. You may have this already set up, but you need to install email web analytics. And that's a little piece of code on your website that allows Aweber or your email marketing platform to track when people visit your site and what pages they're visiting. Uh, so in the resources page, you can see a link to that shows how to set up uh, web page hit automations. 
Um, so I'm going to drop that link into chat. Uh, so it, what it does, uh, Terry, great question. How does it connect to your website? Uh, it just simply, this co code, um, when you add it to your website, uh, it allows a webber to track your subscribers and what pages they're visiting. So that's basically um, how it works. Ben asks, can you have spaces in your tag? Yes, you can have spaces in a tag. I usually recommend using a hyphen because you wouldn't have spaces in a URL. Uh, you probably shouldn't have spaces in a tag. You can use spaces if you want, um, but I recommend using hyphens in between words. So step five, you want to get customers to buy again. Uh, and I'm going to show you a few simple ways that you can get customers to buy again and again, but it's actually much easier to get your customers to buy again than it is to get uh, people who've never purchased from you to buy from you the first time. Uh, so much easier to get customers to buy again who've already bought from you. And so you want to make sure you have automated emails in place once someone becomes a customer. So we've been talking about uh, a funnel here where the top of the funnel, they join your email list. In the middle of the funnel, you send them emails that are, you, you, you uh, first off welcome them to your list, and then you send them emails that are can, can uh, convince them to buy. Once they're ready to buy and they add something to their cart, you send them an abandoned cart email if they don't finish their purchase. And the final stage of the funnel is once they become customers, you want to send them more promotional emails that are to convince them to buy again, because it's much easier to get a customer to buy again than it is to get a brand new person who's never bought from you to buy the first time. So this is a huge mistake to not have these emails in place for your customers. Uh, so when you want to get customers to buy again, there's a few steps I recommend. Uh, step one, you want to apply tags that match the purchases your customers are making. Uh, so rather than just applying a tag, uh, just one tag when someone becomes a customer. So I just showed you how to apply a customer tag. That's a great thing to do. You definitely want to apply a customer tag to your customers, but you also want to apply tags that match the product they purchased. So if you sell, uh, let's say sell all kinds of different flavors of jam uh, or jelly on your website, you want to tag a person if they purchase apricot jelly and you want to tag them apricot jelly and you want to tag them if they purchase raspberry jelly, you want to tag them raspberry jelly. And so that way, when you tag them, depending on what products they purchase, it's going to help you send more relevant emails that are going to get customers to buy again. Uh, so I recommend when someone purchases, tag them based off the product they purchased. And you can use page hit automations to do this. Uh, so if someone visits the receipt page for your raspberry jelly and the URL contains raspberry jelly, uh, you want to tag them based off that page visit with the specific product they purchased. So you could apply two tags to that person. When they visit your raspberry jelly receipt page, you apply the tag raspberry jelly customer and you apply the customer tag to them as well. So they get two tags based off that visit. So you can use page hit automations to do this, to apply tags to people based on what products they're purchasing. You can also use PayPal, WooCommerce, and Shopify. And if you check out the resources area, you'll see all the links to how for how to set this up uh, with Aweber. Uh, so if you have PayPal, you can tag people based off what products they're purchasing. So once you're tagging people based off the specific products they're purchasing, you want to send them automated emails that promote related products. So you may have seen an email before that says, hey, you bought this product. Here are all these other products that we think you might like. And that's basically what this is. When you use page hit automations or WooCommerce or Shopify or PayPal, and you tag people based off what products they're purchasing, you can then deliver automated emails that are relevant to those products. So let's say someone purchases raspberry jelly off your site and you tag them raspberry jelly. And uh, let's say you sell all kinds of other other products that are similar. Let's say you have a raspberry flavored honey. You might want to promote that to people who bought your raspberry jelly because you know they like raspberry. And so that's an example of how you would get customers to buy again. You use the purchases they've already make, made to understand what they're interested in and you promote related products. Uh, so here is uh, an email from Stitch Fix. And this is a great example of an email that's promoting related products. 
Uh, so I use Stitch Fix, absolutely love the service. Uh, it's a clothing delivery service. And this is an email I got that says past faves, new shades. Uh, get more of what you love, buy your favorites in new colors, prints, or sizes while they last. They'll ship separately from your fix for free. So they're using my prior purchases and promoting uh, different styles of the clothing that I've already purchased. This is an example of promoting related products because they know I bought this shirt and I loved it because I gave them feedback that said I loved it. And so they're promoting to me other shirts that they'll know that I love based off my prior uh, my prior purchases. And you can use tags to do this very same thing. Uh, so let me show you how that works inside a Weber. You just have an automated campaign. This example is using a food blogger. Uh, so uh, a food blogger who sells a vegan cookbook. So when someone purchases the vegan cookbook and visits, uh, visits the receipt page for that cookbook, they get tagged vegan cookbook customer. And then as soon as they're tagged that way, they get added to this automated email series and it waits four days. So there's a four day wait after they purchase. And then the email goes out to them that says, here are, are more products we think you'll love. And the email promotes other vegan products that the food blogger has. So she sells this cookbook online. As soon as someone becomes a customer, uh, they're out of this series and then they're gonna get content and products promoted to them that are related to their purchase. Because in the instance of a food blogger, if someone purchases a vegan cookbook, uh, they're most likely following a vegan diet. And so they're not going to be interested in getting uh, books, cookbooks about, you know, meat or uh, dairy, dairy products. They're going to be interested in vegan products. So they'll be much more likely to buy if you promote the right products to them. Okay, final step, make sure your email platform has the right tools to do all of this. Uh, and if you're not using a Weber, it may not, but a Weber actually has all the tools you'll need for this. Uh, your email platform will need page art automations, cart abandonment, an email builder you can easily use. So I find sometimes that people get an email marketing platform where they can't build emails unless they know how to code or unless they have crazy technical skills. And that's not going to work um, if unless you have those skills and a lot of people don't. So I always recommend to people, make sure you have an email builder that you can easily build emails in without coding. Uh, and then a landing page builder you can easily use for your, um, for your thank you pages, for your pages where you're trying to get people to subscribe to your email list. And you want to make sure that your email platform integrates with your email e-commerce e platform. It could be a direct integration or you could use something like Zapier, but that's going to make your life easier. Uh, so... Aweber does have all of these tools. Uh, and if you're here and you're not an Aweber customer and you're interested in trying it out, uh, you can try, uh, get a 30 day free trial of Aweber at this link. I'll also pull the link up in the chat. So that you can see it. Uh, so if you're here and you're not an Aweber customer and you're interested in trying some of the things I've shown you today and your email platform won't let you do that, uh, please download a trial. We would love to have you as a customer. Um, and this is a 30 day free trial. You get 24 seven support with this. And now we're at the questions portion of the class. Uh, so again, feel free to take advantage of that 30 day free trial. But if I've missed your questions and you've posted questions in the chat, that's just because I haven't been looking at questions during the presentation, uh, but I'm happy to look at questions now. Teresa says, are there supposed to be links on the resources? There should be. Uh, let me <laughs> let me quickly take a look at that. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up the resources for you guys all again. Hold on. Uh, so I'm also going to drop in the chat, uh, here, I'm pulling up the, the class resources. So you should see a button for class resources. And when you click on that, um, you should see a Google doc with a bunch of hyperlink text that you can click on to access the resources. So you should see a bunch of hyperlinked text in there. Um, can everyone view the class resources? 
Oh yeah, I see, I see a bunch of you in the document, so I know you can view them. But yeah, you can click on these different links uh, to access the different resources. And let me also drop in the survey in the chat. So if any of you have to run right now, uh, please do let me know what you thought of this class because your feedback really helps us, um, helps me and lets me know, uh, you know how to be better and how, what I'm doing well. So Lucinda says, you said to, you said to sell in the thank you email, but then later you don't want to hard sell too fast. Should I go from my freebie lead magnet to selling my $147 training in the thank you page? Hmm, that's a good question. So what some people recommend, Lucinda, and I think this is a great practice, is on your thank you page or in your first, in your welcome email, if you want to sell, sell one of your cheaper products. And people will call this a tripwire. Um, so they might sell something that's like a $10 product or a $1 product on their thank you page or in their welcome email. Um, and the reason that they do this is because psychologically, when someone makes, once someone makes their first purchase, they're more likely to buy from you again. So they call it a trip buyer because it's what trips people or what's get, it's what gets your audience to then start this domino effect where they purchase other products. So $147 training is a high priced product to sell right on your thank you page, but, um, I would test it. So I would try it, see if anyone's buying it, because it may be that your audience is interested in buying it right at that point. It may be that it may, it's way too much for them right at the beginning of their relationship with you. So I would test it on your thank you page. If you have a lower price product, I would test selling that in your thank you page in your welcome email as well and see how those all convert. Um, and if people are willing to buy your $147 product right from the get-go, my hypothesis, and I, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but my hypothesis is, is that that's a high-priced product for people to buy right at the beginning of their relationship with you. Uh, so it would be better to offer a lower-priced product if you have one, or to get people to take some other kind of action on your thank you page. Maybe on your thank you page, instead of promoting the the $147 training, you promote a free webinar where you teach people something that's related to your training. And then during the free webinar, you pitch your $147 training. Uh, and so after the webinar or after the class you offer, they may be more familiar and comfortable with you, uh, and have more relationship with you and be willing to spend that $147. Uh, so is it possible to get support when actually working on an automated email? Yes. Uh, feel free to contact our customer solutions team. They can help you create an automated email. Andrew says, how could I get your recorded lecture so we could listen to the lecture again? I will be emailing out a replay. So don't worry if you are, uh, if you missed anything, I will email that out. So Jason says, is there a tool in Aweber to put in a deadline for a sale that expires at a date time based on when the person subscribes? Great question, Jason. There is not a tool inside Aweber that will allow you to do that, but there are other platforms uh, that allow you to do that. Um, so you would want to have like an e-commerce platform or your, a, a website tool that allows you to have limited time sales that expire. And then in your email, you simply say this expires on whatever date. You can put a countdown timer in an email pretty easily, um, but Aweber itself does not have a service which will uh, create an expiring sale for you. Uh, Teresa says, I am an, oh, sorry, bumped the mic. I am an Aweber customer. Uh, what is your tech support like for getting these things in place as far as tech help? Uh, Teresa, our tech support is amazing. Our customer solutions team, they're available 24-7. Uh, so you can chat them, you can call them, you can email them, and they can help you through uh, some of this. So if you call them and you say, hey, you know, I watched this class and I'm confused about this one part. Can you show me how to do it? They can help you through that uh, and they can show you how to do it. They can share resources with you to show you how to do it. So they're great. We actually have an award winning customer solutions team uh, who knows the product inside and out and they are phenomenal. So please do contact them. I'll drop the contact page. 
into uh, chat. It's aweber.com forward slash contact us htm, but I'll drop in the chat as well so that you can easily access it. Uh, thanks, Jacob. Coralie says, how long is too long to stick with one lead magnet with minimal subscribers? So I'm guessing, Coralie, you, uh, you're saying that the lead magnet uh, is, is, not getting, is not getting a lot of subscribers for you. It's not working that well. Is that what you're saying? Okay, cool. Yeah, so what I would say is it's not so much based on how long, like what period of time. It's based on how many people have viewed that that lead magnet. Uh, like if it's just, you know, three people who have viewed viewed your sign up form, that's not really enough people to test yet whether the lead magnet is working. I would wait until at least 50 people, ideally over 100 people have seen your lead magnet in your sign up form before deciding whether it's converting or not. Uh, with Aweber sign up forms, you can actually split a A-B test or split test your sign up form offers. So you could have um, the same exact sign up form. And on one version of it, you offer one lead magnet and another version of it, you offer another lead magnet. And then you can see which one converts better. So Aweber will serve that sign up form to your audience. 50% of people will get one, one lead magnet form. 50% will get the other. And you can see which one converts better. So you could try that poorly to see um, uh, which if, if, if you have two lead magnet options to see which one converts better. And if I didn't drop the survey in the chat, I'm going to drop that in the chat one more time. Let's see. Regina says, what's an example of excellent support? Maybe someone in chat can answer that. Um, but yeah, our, our, uh, or maybe someone can drop, any other customer can, if you could drop in the chat and let someone know, you know, uh, let Regina know what, uh, what makes our customer solutions awesome? That would be great. Um, uh, so Leanne asks, what does the URL show on Aweber landing pages? Let me show you the landing pages URL. So if you go into Aweber, If you go into Aweber and you go over to landing pages, you can see the URL right below your published pages. And you can see that this URL, um, uh, hold on, the page, this page isn't published. Here's a published page. So if I look at this URL, you can copy it to clipboard here. But if we put paste it into a browser window, you can see that this is a pretty, um, it looks like this. It has the word Aweber pages in it. And then it has a string of text that helps to know what your landing page is. And it's, it's a long URL. Um, so something you could do to make it look better is you could use Bitly, uh, a link shortener like Bitly. Uh, you can, there are WordPress plugins that you can get if you have a WordPress site that'll actually mask this link so that it looks like it's coming from your domain name. So that's something you can do as well. Um, but it is like this long string of text, which for some people might not be visually appealing. Um, so I'll, I'd recommend Bitly or I'd recommend using one of those WordPress plugins that masks the URL so that it looks like it's coming from your domain. Um, but if you're interested, um, you can drop in the chat and let me know if you would like the ability to add uh, custom links so that you can choose your own link for the Aweber landing page builder. That's a feature that we are um, considering working on. Uh, Emily says that you're getting more templates for landing pages. Yes, Emily, that's a great question. Keep keep an eye out. Uh, you might see uh, very shortly. I, I don't think I'm, I don't think our product team would like me to, to give away the release date, but very soon uh, we we will have new Aweber landing page builder templates. Um, so great question. Soon there's they're coming out soon, and we will email you as soon as they're as they're released. Um, uh, oh, so Katie says, when will more fields be available other than name or email on the landing page? Great question, Katie, because 
we actually already have that available. Um, let me see if I can get it uh, to work here. So, so you'll see now, Katie, that we have this option to select a form field and you can add custom fields to your form. Uh, so you can add extra fields now. That's actually a new feature we just added. One of the cool things about the Aweber landing page builder is we're adding features all the time. Uh, so uh, you can actually add now custom fields um, to the landing page. Uh, yes, Angelina, I did say bit.ly. Um, Uh, Coralie says, does the Aweber plugin offer shortened URL? So there's not an Aweber, the Aweber plugin won't do that for you, the Aweber WordPress plugin, but there are other WordPress plugins that do that. Um, and I see everyone saying that custom URLs would be better. Um, and I will tell our product team because like I said, we're always adding new features to the landing page builder and we are actively looking for your suggestions. We've, we developed the landing page builder using Aweber customer suggestions. Uh, so I'll make sure to relay this information to our product team. Uh, so Su Susie says, where are the class resources? Great question, Susie. Uh, also, if you're here and uh, you have to go, no worries. I'll stick around. It is, it is 302. I'll stick around and continue to answer questions, uh, but I will send out the replay to everyone. So, um, you know, don't worry if you have to go. Uh, but you can see uh, all of our on-demand webinars on this page. So you can view on-demand webinars uh, with the page that I just dropped in the chat. Uh, Leanne says, you need a privacy policy page with the landing pages and is this available? Uh, Leanne, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so I, I can't give you, you know, suggestions as far as whether you need a privacy policy page, uh, you may need one, but you could create a privacy policy page with the Aweber landing page builder. You can create unlimited landing pages with the landing page builder, and you can really create any kind of page you want. You can create um, a, an email subscribe page, you can create a sales page, you can create um, a thank you page. You can create a privacy policy page if you would like to. Uh, Shelly says, how can this system be used to sell services? I'm guessing, Shelly, you're, uh, uh, you're asking about Aweber. Uh, so you can use Aweber uh, sales services by um, by using some of the techniques I mentioned today. So having sales emails, setting up automated campaigns that promote products related to what your customers have already bought, uh, to promote products related to what pages on their on your website they're visiting. Uh, you can even promote products on your thank you page or even even in your thank you email. <laughs> Coralie says, as a one-year blogger with 1,200 hits a month, is it odd that I'm not getting many customers besides Chris V? <laughs> oh, Coralie, I'm going to have to tell Chris V you said that. Um, yeah, if you have 1,200 hit, uh, hits um, and you're not getting many subscribers from that. So as far as your conversion rate for your form, mm -hmm. I would say an average conversion rate for an email subscribe form is somewhere between two and 10%. So two and 10% of your traffic uh, might be converting. Um, this is pretty average, 2% is kind of average. Um, so let's say, um, you know, if you had a 10% conversion rate, if you're having 1200 visitors, then tw you would have 120 uh, email subscribers. Um, so sometimes people have really high expectations for their email signup form. Like they expect them to convert at 90% and that's just not the case with traffic. 
Um, so it, it will convert somewhere between, usually between two and 10%. 10%, you're doing pretty well. At 2%, you might have opportunities to optimize your lead magnet. Uh, Terry says, I'm in the process of having my website updated. Will my, where will my web designer find the code so we can start creating tags? Um, so Terry, uh, if you check out the resources page, there is one, uh, one link on the resources page. Let me see if I can highlight it. It's the link that says how to install email web analytics. Uh, so if you check out that link, uh, and if you actually just send that, uh, you can send that over to your web designer and you're going to have a piece of code inside a web that you'll send to them. And then you, you send them this article too, and they should know exactly what to do. And I'll drop that article in the chat. Oh, thanks, Gloria. That made my day. Uh, Jean, uh, Jeanine, Jeanine, uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What giveaways have you seen with, oh, what giveaways have you seen with uh, MLM businesses? Interesting. So MLM businesses are, stand for multi-level marketing, uh, as long as I'm understanding your, your question. So giveaways of MLMs, I've actually seen, so I have, um, I have some friends uh, who sell essential oils. Uh, and I am myself not uh, someone who uses essential oils, but I have friends who sell them. And some of them have created giveaways of, they'll give like away a sample. Um, they might give away uh, like um, uh, like a $50 um, product package of different oils that they love, like their favorite oils. And that might be a giveaway they use on their lead magnet. Uh, so they might say like, um, you know, two lucky winners, are going to get this package of oils or whatever you sell uh, through your multi-level marketing program. And so you could have a giveaway of your favorite product uh, and use that as your giveaway. So I hope that helps uh, Janine. Um, if I have a landing page pop up on my homepage, can I set it to pop up on a specific page? Yes, you can set up the, to, um, you can set up a sign up form to pop up on a specific page. You wouldn't have a landing page pop up, but a sign up form you can, yes, you can set it up to pop up on specific pages. Uh, so Angela says, can you sell downloads and can you have a music player? Um, So, uh, like, so for instance, sell downloads of music and having a music player right inside of an email. Um, Katie says, is it easy to customize using the subscriber's first name? Katie, are you talking about emails? Is it easy to customize emails using the subscriber's first name? Ah, automated emails. Yes, yes, it is easy to do that. So let me show you how to do that inside a Weber. I'm going to get out of the landing page builder. Um, so if I go over to automated campaigns, I go into campaigns. Um, so let's go to this welcome campaign here, which is already active. Open it up. Here's my first welcome email. So I'm going to click on that to highlight it. And so you can add, um, I'm just going to edit the automated series that I already have, um, but you can do this the same way if you're building one from scratch. But if you go into your email, um, so I'm going to go into my selected message to edit it. And if this is a little bit slow, it's because I'm running this webinar right now and my computer is running quite a bit of stuff. Um, but you can see here, I have first name personalization right at the beginning of the email. Um, so this first name fix will actually pull in your subscriber's first name. So if you're sending an email to me, it would say, hi, Liz, at the, at the front of this email. Uh, so if you wanna build this from scratch, here, I'll delete this so you can see how it's done. Um, I would just type in the word, hi, or you could write dear, or you could write, hey. I would write hi, and then I would go up into this gray bar here. Uh, so if you see this gray bar where you can see the different fonts that you can apply, you'll also see this personalized drop down. 
So if you click on the personalized dropdown, uh, and you're going to see three options, subscribers info, subscribers location, and your snippets. So you want to go to subscribers, uh, subscribers info, and then you want to select first name. And you can see that you can actually insert all kinds of uh, information about your subscriber in here. Um, so you could insert, you can insert custom fields. So let's say you have a custom field where you collect someone's favorite color. Uh, then you could insert their favorite color into your email. So um, for instance, like uh, you could have the word blue appear in their email if the word blue is in the custom field, if that makes sense. But if you select first name, it'll pull in this first name personalization, and then you can do high first name comma. So that's how you can easily add first name personalization. You can do it anywhere in your email. So for instance, I could put it right here. As promised, here are my, most top, my 10 most popular choices. Um, and then insert my first name personalization. Oops not subscriber's location, subscriber info. And I could insert it right here if I wanted to. I could also put it in the headline. I can also put it in my subject line by going over this uh, subject lines right up here in the top left. And I can go and add first name personalization into my subject line by clicking on personalize, subscriber's info, first name. So then you can have um, a subject line that says, uh, if it was me you were sending the email to, it would be, Liz, check out these products we think you'll love. Uh, so you can add your subscriber's first name into a subject line as well. Uh, so Ben says, are there words, phrases, or emojis you should avoid in your email heading to avoid delivery in spam folders? So that's a great question, Ben. Uh, and, I, and a lot of people ask me that. Uh, really great question. So my answer is no, um, because... Uh, and it used to be that that was the case, that certain words uh, would trigger Gmail and Yahoo and other ISPs or other internet service providers to send your email to spam. Um, but the algorithms that Gmail and Yahoo and Outlook and all of these email providers are using, those algorithms are getting much smarter. Uh, and the, the purpose of the algorithms is to deliver email that people want to their inbox. So if you were sending emails to me, uh, Gmail's sole goal, their number one goal, is to help emails get to the inbox that I want. Um, and sending an email to spam just based on a word being in the email. So for instance, it used to be uh, people would recommend don't use the word free in your email subject lines because that'll send your emails to the spam folder. Uh, but that isn't the case anymore because Gmail knows that I may want an email in my inbox that has a word free in it or has a word in there that um, you know, might historically get blocked. I might want emails in my inbox that contain emojis. Um, so Gmail and other internet service providers, their algorithms are getting smarter so that they don't just block an email based off a keyword uh, that you might have in your email. Instead, what affects whether your email goes to the inbox or not is a, a bunch of different factors. But the big way that Gmail decides, Yahoo decides whether an email goes to the inbox is simply that the subscriber you're sending to wants that email. And the best way to make sure your subscribers want your emails is to have permission to send to them. Uh, so have them opt into your email list. Don't buy email lists and then send them content that they want. If you can keep your open rates up and keep your click through rates up, your emails are going to be more likely to go to the inbox. You actually build a reputation over time with internet service providers. So if you send emails that your subscribers aren't engaging with, Gmail counts out against you. Um, and it, Gmail may be more likely to, uh, to send your emails to the promotions tab or to the spam folder. Um, but all that to say, Gmail's algorithm is extremely complex. It's very smart. We don't even know everything about it. But the best way to get to the inbox is um, your, first off, to use a good ESP. So use a good email marketing platform. Um, different email marketing platforms have better deliverability rates or better chances of reaching the inbox. Aweber is really good about that. Um, so use a good email platform. And then send, like, send email people want and make sure you're not buying your email list. And yes, Katie, you can use a whitelist link in your email that can help. Um, Alejandro, um, I do recommend double opt-in. Uh, you don't have to use it, but it is a great way to increase your chances of reaching the inbox. So if you can have double opt-in, 
where people subscribe once on your signup form or your landing page, and then they get an email that asks to confirm their subscription, yes, that can increase your deliverability rates. Uh, Karen says, can I make a newsletter looking email that might be two pages with pics or pictures, perhaps copy and paste my Word document. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you can make a newsletter inside a Weber. Um, it's uh, really easy to do that with any of our templates. If you want to create a newsletter inside a Weber, um, you wouldn't want to use automated campaigns for your newsletter. Instead, you'd want to use our broadcast emails and you can start creating a broadcast email under drafts. So you go to drafts right here, and then you would click this green, create a message button. I recommend using the drag and drop email builder because it's very simple to use. So you click on the drag and drop email builder. Open it up. We're gonna have like a template that we choose for you here, but you can choose a different template. Um, uh, we have a bunch of templates. So if you go to this blue button here, you can see we have this default template selected, but you can go to templates and it'll pull up our template gallery of all kinds of different templates that you can use uh, with your with your Aweber account to create a newsletter. Uh, so for instance, you could have something like the Z pattern to have a newsletter. You could use even this newsletter template that we have. Um, I like this template quite a bit. If you pull it up, unselect, keep my message content. Mm, sorry, my computer is extremely slow right now uh, because of the webinar. So hold on one second. Yeah. Can you all still see and hear me? Because I'm afraid the uh, webinar is freezing things up because it's freezing things up in here. Oh, of course it just unfroze things. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. But yeah, so sorry about that. I'm refreshing now. Uh, can you all still see, see and hear me? I feel like I'm having some internet problems over here. Okay, good. Dana says you can hear me. Great. All right, hold on one second while this refreshes. Like I said, when I'm using our webinar platform here, it slows down my computer. Um, so that's probably what's happening. Uh, but yes, here's this newsletter template. I really like this template. You can add your logo in here. You can add your images in here. And then you can promote a, different, a bunch of different pieces of content here if you wanted to. But you could add a big chunk of text here. If you have like multiple pages of text that you'd like to share, you could just put that right in here. And then you could promote different pieces of content down here in those different sections. Uh, Corey says, if you have more than one website, can I use one Aweber account? If yes, is there a way to sort your drafts? So yes, if you have more than one website, Corley, and they're different companies, um, what you could do and what I would recommend is having a different list for each company. Um, so that way each company has its own email list and then they have their own separate draft emails um, and their own separate automated campaigns and uh, that'll make it easier to organize things. So that's what I would recommend. Frederick says, you wouldn't happen to have any email templates for trainings, would you? Uh, Frederick, um, are these online trainings or uh, virtual trainings or in-person trainings? Let me pull up our templates and see. Oh, we have this event template, which might be perfect for you. So let me pull that up. And I, um, you can change the background color of this, of this template really easily. And there we go. So yeah, you can add your logo here at the top. You can have your event date or your training date uh, right here. Um, 
You could have whatever image you want here. You can let people register. You can explain what your online training is. Uh, if you want to have backup dates, you can have those here. And you can change the background color of your email by clicking right here. So I want it to be purple. I could easily change the background of the email to purple. If I want it to be green, a little, I do not like that shade of green. If I want to be pink, I like this. Um, I can just hit apply and change the background color of the email. So yes, this event temp might work for you. Okay, let's see. Ah, so Frederick, you say live virtual classes and live in-person at location trainings. Yeah, so I would use this template uh, because you could promote your online trainings right here. Um, and uh, then you can promote an additional training here, like an in-person training. So I would use something like this. Andrew says, I'm from Hong Kong. Can our template write Chinese? Um, Andrew, you can, um, yeah, you can, you can write whatever language you want into Aweber. Now, UI itself uses English. Um, so for instance, um, like you'll see that this is, this is an English here. So the, the Aweber UI will show English, but you can have whatever language you want inside your emails. Um, uh, so that's totally up to you. See you, Coralie. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, Lucinda says, where do I find that event template? Uh, well, if you go over to the templates button right here, this blue templates button, click on it. And if you scroll down, you can see that we have our first three templates here. And then we have our second three templates here, including this event template. Uh, so you would just click on that event template there and hit apply. And that's how you would pull it up. Ah, uh, yes, Katie, I'm in drafts and then the templates button. Yeah, so if you go to um, hover over messages, click on the drafts button, uh, go to the green button that says create a message, uh, then you can go to templates and select a template. See you, Ben. Have a great rest of your afternoon and thank you. All right, so I think I can take one more question and then I'm gonna have to jump off, unfortunately. Um, so let's see what we have here. Uh, Janine says, can those template templates integrate with Facebook Messenger? No, so we don't have a feature for um, Facebook Messenger chatbots or um, using those templates in Facebook Messenger. You might be able to create a simpler, a, like a similar template in Facebook Messenger, but we don't have like a Facebook Messenger uh, chatbot tool inside Aweber. Uh, and yes, Lucinda, the templates are under drafts. So here I'll, I'll exit out of here. You can see the blue templates is right here, um, that button, but to access that area, you'll hover over messages and then click on drafts. And once you do, you'll get a page that looks like this. And uh, you can see all the drafts you already have. And then you can also create a message from scratch. So I would, uh, if you don't have a message, I would say create a message using this green button and then click on drag and drop email builder. And once you do that, it'll pull up the drag and drop editor. And you'll see on the right hand side, a blue button that says templates. And with that blue button, you can select your template of choice. Uh, so right here is the templates button. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, <laughs> yes, Greg, I, you know, I don't know how I would write a note to your mom, but uh, um, if I could, I would be happy to. Um, but yes, I'm going to wrap things up here. Thank you for all sticking around for the questions portion of this. Thank you so much for attending. I'm dropping a link in the chat for the survey. I would love to hear your feedback on this, uh, what you thought of it, what went well, um, if you liked it or not, and also feedback on what topics you would like to hear in the future. Um, so what else would you like to learn about? How else can we help? And if you're not yet an AWeber customer, please do start a free trial. Uh, we would love to have you as a customer and have you on board and to help you grow your business with email marketing. Uh, thank you, Lucinda. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you, everyone who's here attending. And just have a great rest of your day. Uh, and stay safe.